Yes, yes, yes. 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 Is that your brother? Yes, are you brother? <laughs> well, as you'd have just seen, we've got a new addition to the family. This is Barkley. I know that I'm gonna get a lot of questions about having another little puppy because many of you will remember it was quite a long process getting Porter because I was very anti having a dog and it was for all the right reasons but now we've had Porter for over a year I feel like I've settled myself with the responsibility of a dog and I find it very enjoyable I think the morning dog walks has just been an absolute game changer um, I just love getting out in the mornings and enjoying the sunrises it's just the gift that keeps on giving and so initially when Lydia started making noises about another puppy which to be fair she's kind of made them since Porter. She's always kind of hinted at having two dogs. And in more recent times, that conversation has got more frequent. I've always just shut it down because personally, I think it's easier with Lydia to say no rather than to show any consideration because that is in her head a yes. So oh, I was- were burning. Yeah, I was a no, 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 no. And on one beautiful frosty morning um, last week, Lydia proposed the idea again and I am a soft touch and so here we are with a new little pup and it's been brilliant hasn't it so far? Yeah, really we've, lovely. We've had a, a nice introduction, he's certainly a lot easier than I remember Porter being but I do think that that's probably due to the fact that we're more relaxed, we're more chilled, we know what we're doing. We also don't need to trial anything that we did before so the way in which we're going to train him and just the, having the confidence of basically doing the best we can for him and introducing him to Lumi and Porter, which by the way has been absolutely fantastic. They all learn. Uh, yes. yes. Do you, you want to go with your mummy, don't you? Mm -hmm. I've lost where I was then. Uh, but anyway, it's just, it's been really good and uh, we feel very comfortable and confident with uh, having a new pup and it isn't particularly any extra work because everything that we do for Porter we're now just doing it for Barclay as well and it's Barclay spelled like Berkeley so a bit like Barclay Square a bit like Berkeley Square aren't you mate I keep on calling him Berkeley but it's definitely Barclay come on you two I'm looking forward to seeing them grow up together Lumi's was like so much more relaxed as well it's almost like having Bolly in the house and Porter and all of our friends other dogs as well when they all come over she gets more like tolerant of dogs as time goes on and i think the biggest thing that we learned with lumi is, is she's very sensitive with smell and dogs don't offend her basically and so when she originally saw barkley for the first time she was very relaxed about it she um just kind of observed and watched and now in the evenings when we're sitting in the lounge lumi will come and jump on and sit on the back of the sofa whilst the boys are on the sofas with us so yeah i'm i think that it's all happy family, which is very, very good. because I think that that's always the biggest concern, certainly for me, uh, with change and introducing animals into a house, is that are they gonna get along? And so far, it's been very, very good. And I think that it does help that, of course, he is a puppy. It's been a lovely, lovely start. So I've spent the last week just being present with the boys, just enjoying uh, watching them play and learning Barclay's new mannerisms, because all dogs have their own little quirks and little mannerisms. And uh, yeah, he's definitely starting to come out and show his personality as each day goes on. Uh, which is lovely to see. So I've kick-started today's video a little bit later than expected, but how beautiful are the mornings at the moment? Like, just insane. You saw the intro to this video. We've been getting those sort of sunrises and those frosty mornings all week. It's just been absolutely magical. But this morning I had to go and pick up the Aston from Aston Martin Works in Newport Pagnell because it had a service MOT. So I needed to drop Lydia off at the dentist first and I ended up waiting for Lids, which was about 45 minutes. And then by the time I got the car and got home, it was around about 11 a.m. So my day has started a lot later than I was hoping for, but I think I'm just gonna quickly help Lydia film a Reels, which is gonna post on her Instagram today, and then we'll get cracking with the day. And you can probably hear them in the background having a little wrestle. Where's your brother? 
Where is he? Go on then. You boys ready to film a video of mummy? Hey, you little terror. You little terror. Yeah, you little terror. Yes. You're so beautiful. Yes. So are you, little porcini. It's one of my favorite parts of a puppy is the back of the neck. All this. What's all this, eh? What's all this? Say hello to everybody then. Have kisses. Kiss. Yes. Next one, mate. Um, a little bit of slobber on the camera. Just what we wanted. I'm ready to say hello to your new brother. Yeah. Poor girl. You're a good girl, Lummy. Yes, you are. Yes. Very interested. Yes, very interested, Lummy. She's in her safe zone, lads. She's in her safe zone. I'm not sure if we actually got to see the uh, ferns that we went and collected in my last vlog. Well, this is one of them. Currently displayed by the front door. I feel like it works very well. I also put one on my office desk as well. I felt like I needed one in here, so it looks very good. I also got this tissue box holder, which as you can see is where I've stuck all my external hard drives. So I thought it was a little bit of a tidier way of keeping my external hard drives into my desktop. Lydia actually suggested maybe putting a tissue in there to make it look actually like it's being used as a tissue box, which isn't a bad idea. Also received the invitation to the Todd's uh, fashion show that took place on Sunday. It'd be very lovely. I think Todd's are doing some amazing menswear at the moment. So if you're into your like earthy tones, greens and browns, then Todd's certainly are delivering some great pieces. So make sure you check those out. The bees, as you can see, just there. They seem to be doing okay. So far, so good. As expected, we've probably lost around about 10 bees, which actually isn't that bad. Um, bees often die um, when they go out and try and forage during the colder weather. They uh, basically get a little bit too cold and sometimes they don't make it back in and sometimes they die in the hive. The undertaker bees will remove them and stick them on the landing board, which is where I've seen a few. But Hopefully the colony uh, in there is still relatively large. That's obviously something that I can't detect. Um, I do need to get a heat source piece of equipment that I can maybe put in and use to track the heat source of the hive, which will give me a better idea of the cluster size. Just haven't got around to doing it yet. I've got a lot of stuff I need to do at the moment, actually. I need to look at ordering um, a new pair of Sherling gloves because I find that they're the most comfortable and they definitely keep my hands the warmest. I've been wearing mine so much, both on dog walks and when I've been going out, that they're just starting to look really tatty and trashed. So I think I'm gonna get a new pair that I can wear to like smart occasions so if we're going out for dinner uh, somewhere where i know that they're not going to be getting dirty and i'm not going to be getting my hands on stuff like when i go for a dog walk just might be something simple like picking porter up whilst he's covered in mud um, and then when i clean the gloves down the wipe then i end up with like stains on them because they're suede i don't mind using them because that's the whole point of having gloves to keep your hands warm uh, but it also i'd probably rather not be going to a nice restaurant wearing like a muddy stained pair of gloves so i might get a second pair that i can wear for like sort of smarter occasions. So I think today I'm gonna to go online and order a pair of those. But first, I need to grab Lydia because we need to get this reels filmed before we lose the light. You let me know where you wanna film it yeah, and okay. I will then make sure it's lit properly. I don't think we need lighting. No? Okay. No, I don't want it to be too faffy. Like there's, we've got loads of natural light still. Okie dokie. I did notice in that last little clip that there's a lot of animal hair on me. So the lint roller is out. 
Black clothes and fur babies don't go hand in hand, do they? <laughs> I think this is the best lint roller that I've brought. I got it off Amazon. It's got a little rope handle on it. It's wooden and it comes with like six or nine rolls. And so far it's been good. Just like your wife. Ah, oh, lovely. Initially, I thought I was filming a Reels for Lids, but I've just asked her for the creative, and actually, we're all in it. So, the plan of action is is that Lids is going to walk into shop with Barclay, and I'm going to be in shot already with Lumi and Porter. Now, getting three animals to stay still for a moment whilst we're there will be very challenging. Goody has assured me that it will only take a few minutes, and uh, we'll be done before you know it so the only other option that I had was that it was just me and I just pulled Barkley out of a handbag you could do <laughs> could do let's try the, yeah, the, the family one first so um, it's a good job I got ready today isn't it because I didn't know I was going to be featuring in the video so uh, I'm gonna allow this camera to run and basically just film us cracking on but it's just gonna be me filming on my Sony on a tripod and we'll just probably edit maybe a little keyframe there's a bit of motion to the actual footage, just panning in and out or something, but apart from that, it's gonna be pretty static. It's just where Lydia are introducing the latest addition to the family. Oh. Firstborn. She's so much happier when you hold her. If I hold her, she's like wiggly bum. I think it's probably because I support her bum and... I support her bum. Like, yeah, when she's tired. Yeah, when she's tired, I think it's the key. Yeah. Right, let's have a look at the camera. You'll be lucky to get both of us in. Set up for one. Well, if you move the cushions. Yeah, set up for one though. So you need to go back. Is that where you want to sit? And obviously, no, no, end. yeah, so I'll come in and I'll sit there. You'll sit there, okay. So you'll sit there and you'll be able to see Lumi behind you and you'll have Porter. Let's move this across the paper. Take his collar off. No. Um, do we have the track? Do we know what, like how? Would I just walk in and sit down? Yeah. Yeah. You sit there, Lummy. You belly. Ready? Are you sure you've got your legs spread quite enough? <laughs> Go on, do it again. Proper man spreading. <laughs> I'm gonna have to keep pushing your leg out of the way. Go Can on. you just move your bloody leg? Do it with the camera. With the camera. Yes. Ready? Three, yeah. two, one. Well, three takes and we're done. Wasn't too bad after all. If anything, I'd say it was me that was letting the team down. Animals are actually behaving quite well. And so I've just finished editing that up for Lydia and it's gonna be going live on her channel in the next few hours, which would have been on Monday this week. Um, if you're watching this live on Wednesday evening when this does go live. It's actually something, just a little reminder, uh, that of course my videos will be going out every Wednesday at 5 p.m. or as close to 5 p.m. as possible. Sometimes I get caught out with upload speeds here. Sometimes it takes me like, an hour and a half to upload a video and then every now and then it will take like a few hours and then occasionally but not very often it does actually get stalled on the rendering stage and I'll end up having to re-upload the video so occasionally last year there was a few times that it went out a lot later than planned but I will be going live 5 p.m. every Wednesday I'm looking forward to another year on the vlogs uh, we've got some exciting projects already lined up for the year and like I mentioned in my first vlog, hopefully a couple of trips, but nothing yet has been set in stone. So I'll keep you posted on that. Well, in last week's video, some of the more eagle-eyed amongst you had spotted that in the background of one of my clips, you could see that there were a flock of birds flying in the background around the greenhouse. And it's something that I haven't actually discussed before, but it's one of life's gifts that I enjoy quite frequently as I sit in my office looking out the window and on the field behind our woodland there are 
a flock of birds that at this time of year just fly around in circles over and over again. Never here in the morning, they always arrive in the afternoon, so they obviously disappear, probably to get some shelter and uh, possibly to hide from any prey. But they come every day and uh, there's actually a couple of different breeds of birds that hang around in the fields. I enjoy them, so I thought I'm gonna come out here with the camera and film a little bit of footage for you so uh, you can enjoy them as well as me. So very sad, there's a couple of worker bees just on the landing strip as I've mentioned. So you might be able to see some slight movement happening. that a little bit further back. Go on girl, in you go. It is absolutely freezing out here, but I thought whilst I'm out here, I'm just gonna quickly water the ferns that haven't yet been planted in the house. And also the lemon tree, which is doing very, very well at the moment. I'm very happy about that. Um, but I don't need Liz to spin out here for a few days, so I'm gonna uh, give everything a quick water and then I'm gonna head inside, try and warm up, because that is freezing. But how spectacular was that? That looked insane. Mammy's going on an adventure. Isn't she? My first born, well, my second born, well, my third born. <laughs> and then my last born, my last born boy. Kiss the snoot. Hmm? How many, how many shits did you take on the carpet today? A little cheeky sneaking. Many shits on the carpet. Say goodbye, boys. Lad's not in then. <laughs> you got your toothbrush? Uh, yes. Let's get on the beers, mate. What are we gonna do with all our free time? 
I reckon you want to watch the MMA. Yeah. What do you want to do, Porcini? It's just us. It's the boys. It's the boys. Yes. Yeah, the boys night in. Well, this evening's dinner is leftover pasta from yesterday. I think Lids has certainly talked about this on her channel before and it may have even been on mine also. Basically, I am notorious for cooking a packet of pasta and then trying to eat half a pack and I also serve Lids half. So instead, I'm now splitting it down to make sure we're getting more meals out of each packet and this is um, the result. We have another dinner, nice and easy, just reheated it and uh, I'm gonna enjoy this now. It's a chicken pasta with a tomato sauce and parmesan and cheddar. Very scrumptious. You look like you might need to go outside for a toilet, mate. You're walking in circles. That, or you've already started on the session. Hmm? Should we go out? It's dinner in a second as well, and you go crazy for dinner. Look at you smelling. Look at your little nose working. Porcellini, a little bit of salmon oil for you, yes. So we are currently working on getting Barclay onto a raw diet. Porter is really enjoying his salmon oil. This is actually something that we picked up from Carrie. Porter absolutely loves the salmon oil and so we give him a little squirt of that with his dinner also. And you two don't know what to do with yourselves, do you? Hey, right, let's see how we can do this then. Look how excited he is. Right, Barclay's down first. Porter. Porty, go. You are a gannet, mate. You need to slow down. Slow down, slow down. Good boy. I know, good boy, good boy. Slow down. You are a little monster. Never seen a sausage eat like it. No way. And then Porcini, very, very distinguished. Very slowly eating his food like a good boy. Good boy. This is so good, you're waiting. Good boy. Well, whilst the boys catch a little bit of shut eye in the kitchen, I think I'm gonna get busy editing this video ahead of Wednesday because tomorrow I've got James coming over and we're gonna be shooting some campaign stuff um, as well as hopefully getting some lovely photos with Barclay because we yet to get any. So hopefully we'll get some nice shots in the morning tomorrow. But before I sign off, just kind of trying to preempt some potential questions regarding the bee. So when bees get really cold, they can't function. Their body shut down and ultimately they, they die. It is possible, as you saw, to bring them back to life by warming them up again and they'll start to function again and the idea is, is that you can obviously get them back into the colony and prolong their life. Now there are lots of people that have pros and cons to this. Now the argument against doing it is that bees that normally go out foraging are older bees, bees that don't have much life left in them and they often die either through their old age, wear and tear essentially, or because they're becoming weak. Now, the argument is, is that you don't want to have weak bees within your colony because you need your colony to be as strong as possible to get through the winter months. And if you've got weak soldiers within that colony that are gonna be extracting honey and stores from the colony, that aren't gonna be efficiently helping to keep the cluster warm and to be able to provide a good service uh, to the colony, then they're basically a dead weight. It feels very natural for a beekeeper to want to keep their bees alive because 
we want them to survive. That's what we're keeping them for, to keep them alive, to keep them healthy. So it kind of sits within our moral compasses to try to keep bees alive. However, I also understand that the argument against it, which is by trying to keep a bee or a collection of bees alive, that could be at the detriment of the colony. I kind of understand both arguments. I don't think that saving the odd bee here and there, if I pop out and there's one on the landing strip that looks like it's not been there for very long, just give it a little helping hand uh, because you never know, it could have just got caught off guard. But I probably wouldn't go to large extents to like constantly be out there collecting bees, warming them up, because you can stick them in like an airing cupboard for half an hour in a Tupperware box with some perforated holes in it to help them warm back up again and put them back out. Now I wouldn't be going to like drastic levels to try to save every single bee that I find, but if I'm out there and there's a bee on my landing strip that's not been there for long, then I'm gonna help warm her up and get her back in the hive. So that's my approach. So um, a little bit in the middle. So I thought I would just reference that because I realized that I hadn't addressed it. I got carried away filming those birds, which didn't actually take off properly. It was very lovely seeing them flying around, but they didn't actually fully take off and fly like they normally do. So hopefully another day I'll uh, be able to capture that. But I am gonna sign this video off. I hope you have enjoyed it. And uh, I hope you enjoy having Barkley a little bit more in these videos because he's gonna be very present, just like the others. And uh, yeah. It's gonna be a fun year watching him grow up to adulthood and I'm sure he's gonna be keeping us very busy. As always, I hope you have a lovely rest of the week and I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday. Peace.